A big part of the reason why I'm making these videos is to share the experiences that I'm having living in this off-the-grid reality and the things that I've learned in order to help those of you that at some point in your lives, if you decide to go off the grid, hopefully the, the experiences that I have had will help you avoid some of the mishaps that I've personally gone through. When you go off the grid, it's very important to develop a sense of community, if possible, with those around you, to find those of like minds. And when I say like minds, I don't mean those that are aware of conspiracies and those that are aware of threats to physical survival, those that understand um, the, the concept of being a good neighbor, of not fucking over your neighbor, and not trying to do something to your neighbor, or, or drive your neighbor out of the land off the land as if there's some sort of an Indian that doesn't have a firearm and you're the white man coming in to take over the land. There are people here in this valley that have that mentality that people that aren't like them, uh, people that look different, people that think different, people of a shamanic nature shouldn't be in the valley. And that's the evil in the valley. But there is good and there is evil in the valley and we need to focus our attention on what is good, what is positive. And there are some positive things coming in the summer, hopefully, where I'm going to be getting more experience building. I've wanted to do this for many, many years, and I want to be helping uh, a soon-to-be uh, neighbor build his home. And from that point on, I may help other neighbors build their home. But I want to make this video to share some of my experiences in order to help some of you avoid similar mistakes. When you're in the situation that I'm in, and you have no money, you have very little money, I thank those donations that have come in. I'm trying to raise about $100 a month, and it looks like uh, I have raised $100 for this month. So I'll be able to put some gas in my car and uh, be able to go do the show once a week, 15 miles that way. And I'm hoping that that situation will resolve itself. So I've been living very simply, and I've developed friendships with those that have been open to friendship. Now what I've learned is, if you don't know about someone's history and they fuck people over and they've called the police on people and followed false police reports because there were other neighbors they didn't like in the valley and they brought unnecessary attention to the valley i.e. the police and they extend their hand in friendship you need to be aware it's the same thing for a woman going out with a man he says, would you like to come upstairs would you would you like to have a drink and most women, not all women, but most women know for their own safety, if you're not interested in having sex with that man, if you're not interested in going to a certain territory, you know what I mean, um, then, then you may want to consider doing it another night when you're more warmed up for that type of activity. If you're not interested in that type of activity, you may not want to go upstairs unless you really know the person, unless he's like a brother, unless he's like a really good friend, and you know that, but you should know that. Now me, I'm just using that as an analogy. I didn't know certain neighbors here in the valley before I got a chance to get to know them, and, and they offered their help, a few of them. And I'm thinking of one in particular, but I really don't want to get involved in the negative energy because the more I talk about it, the more this person feeds on it because he stalks my videos. But here, let me give you a, a cooler. Here, let me help you with this. Oh, now let me stock your YouTube channel. Now let me stock your Facebook page. Now let me tell all the neighbors about you. Now let me place judgment on you, even though he's a pedophile and he has sex with children. Now let me disrupt things for you because I don't like your energy, even though I've never attacked this person. I told him, don't attack me. Now that's all I'm going to talk about in terms of this individual. I learned the hard way in that situation. And I was told by many, many neighbors, you need to stay away from this person. And I was told by many, many neighbors, man, this guy is a pedophile. He has a history. And now that wasn't told to me until later. If I knew that from the get-go, I would have never even have talked to this person if I knew he had sex with children in the Yucatan years ago. I would have never talked to this person. It came out later, and I found out later, man, this person has been bragging about this. The whole valley knows this. And people started to tell me later on in the valley, 
About 10 people told me in the Valley about this person's pedophile history. Everyone knows about this guy. And so I want to give you guys some advice. When you become friends with people and neighbors warn you about them, listen to those warnings. Uh, when you start hearing about um, people having problems with other neighbors and calling the police on them, filing false police reports, things of that nature, major red flags should go up and you should go in the opposite direction. So we need to build community. But there are some people that have come out here to these areas because they don't like human beings. They may love government, they may, may love the president, they may love war, death, destruction, rape, energy. But they may not like human beings, community, and the love vibration that comes from right here, the heart chakra. Which is, by the way, the most powerful electromagnetic area in the human body. That's why I say to be in the heart, not in the mind. Be in the heart. And a lot of these concepts of love, acceptance, they're, they're foreign concepts. It's like, it's like a foreign language. They've never heard of it. They've never understood it. They don't know what love is. And so in my journeys here, as I've been trying to manage that situation and diffuse it and turn into, so it doesn't turn into something that, that is really, really crazy, um, I've become friends with other neighbors. And neighbors, uh, the only word I know how to use, even though they're like miles and miles away from here, I really have no neighbors, but you can see them. So they're kind of a neighbor, but it's not like a neighbor in the city. It's like a neighbor, instead of a few blocks away, a few miles away. When you become close to certain people because you need something, right? Maybe I need help getting water, right? Maybe I need help every now and then getting a ride to the store. Once you develop a bond with certain people and you become friends with them and, and you need them for something, if they know where your buttons are and they know how to push your buttons and they happen to have certain issues with either alcohol or something else, um, if they know you're sensitive to, uh, to racism, if they know you don't like uh, towelhead jokes and camel toe jokes and uh, they know that you're... Uh, that you can get very defensive when people attack Muslims or people that look darker than uh, the average pale face for the most part that exists out here. There, there are no real Indians out here. That There are uh, mostly all white people in this valley. I know of no one that's black. So this is uh, the valley here um, is full of residents that have the color of the conqueror. Those that have conquered this land that push the Indians out. And don't want different ideas. The uh, people that speak in terms of spiritual terms, like I do, in this valley, because it makes them feel uncomfortable about their reality and how they treat people. And there's there's one person that I've spent some time with that um, was hurtful to me, and I told him, please don't talk about people over there in that way because I find it to be disrespectful. You're hurting my feelings, and I'm very open that I have feelings. Men are taught, you don't have feelings. You must be a man. You can't have feelings. You can't express that you have feelings and your feelings are hurt, that your feelings are crushed. That just seemed to make it worse. Now you said, you hurt your own feelings. I said, okay, all right. And I'm thinking, you know, how am I going to get my water barrel? How am I going to, you know, get my battery charged? Because I have no solar panels. I use that battery to power this laptop. That is an inverter, if you can see that. That is the battery that I paid $80 for at, um, at a store in town, and that inverter ran about 40 So it's really not easy for me to, to make these videos because it takes energy to make these videos, and I currently have no solar, and I currently have no money for solar, and uh, no one's offered to donate uh, any solar panels, which I understand. They're not cheap. So I've still been in the situation of being without power. When you go off the grid, you got to be willing to get hurt because you got to be willing to put yourself out there and be who you really are because you want people to gravitate 
uh, towards that light side in you. You don't want to put on a mask. You don't want to pretend that you're somebody that you're not. You want to be who you are because we came out here to be happy. We came out here to be free. We didn't come out here to live like we did in the city. We came out here to feel a sense of camaraderie. We came out here to feel a sense of family that we didn't have wherever we came from. Whether you came from San Francisco, whether you came from Portland, Oregon, Okay, whether they came from uh, the East Coast, where they came from Alabama, where they came from Tennessee, uh, whether they came from Southern California, okay, whether they came from Alaska, whatever, uh, another country. There's a reason why people are here, and what you got to realize when you go off the grid is some people are out here because if they were to do in the city what they do here they would be arrested on a regular basis and given DUIs. Then there's other people that are out here because if they were to do uh, in the city what they have done out here or what they have done elsewhere, they would be in jail for a long, long, long time. If people knew about the skeletons in their closet, they would be in jail for a very long time in a cell with Bubba, who would give him, be given them a piece of what they have been dishing out to other little boys and children. Then there's other people out here that understand the beauty of nature. That it's, that it's beautiful to take your shoes off, you know, to be barefoot, and to just sit out on the, you see how hardened my feet are? Oh yeah, oh yeah, I'm so close to just being able to walk on glass. But, there are people that come out here because nature makes sense to us. To sun gaze. I've never seen anybody out here to sit here and sun gaze. People get used to it. They get used to the clouds. They get used to the mountains. There are people here in the valley that never go hiking. And there's a lot I haven't seen in this area because, A, I don't have insurance. And it's a risk if I go out. So in a way, I, I am kind of stranded here at the yurt with limited income. And uh, limited Federal Reserve notes. And the car needs some repairs. So right now I'm just using it for basic immediate needs relating to survival. I'm not taking the car on trips. If I were to take the car on a trip, it, it needs some work. But when you come out here, a conscious person will make an attempt if possible. Thank God for Ryan taking me backpacking last week to go and see the mountains. You know, the San Juan Mountains here are very, very beautiful. Um, to go fishing, to go rafting to go just a couple miles down this way to the Rio Grande uh, River, which is real close, and just be in the river. You know, it feels so good. When, when I feel dirty, I smell, I think, okay, but I haven't had a shower in three weeks. But, you know, to, to go to the river and take the water and, and feel it dripping down your face, put it on your hair and feel it drip down. It may feel cold at first, but there's like this... Is like the sensation that takes place. Now, I know my hair is starting to look wild, and, uh, you know, I really don't care what people think about me because, you know what, people, there, there was someone on Facebook that said, thank God you lost that metrosexual look. Metrosexual? Metrosexual? Does this look anything like metrosexual? I've had to live my whole life with people making fun of me because I have a very hairy chest. It's called the Afghani jeans on my dad's side. Does this look like metrosexual to you? I don't think so. That was very rude of you. And you know who said that. You know who you are. That was cruel. That was cruel. But that's cool. And now people can look at me, oh, look at that guy who's so free-spirited, who's got that long hair. Is he some sort of a hippie? Is he some sort of an Arab? Is he Mexican? It just goes on and on and on. I'm a fucking human being that deserves love just like you. Why do you hate me? Coming out here is about being independent. Independent from needing anyone for anything. Period. And even though certain people have made certain things easier for me, oh, come get your battery charged. Oh, come out, hang out with me as I drink beers and talk shit, you know, and get all angry. And I would actually, when I'm hanging out with these people, feel the spiritual, the dark spiritual energy, even though they have good in them. They have the light and the dark. But once someone starts getting into that eighth beer, ninth beer, and it's three o'clock and it's four o'clock, and they're ranting and raving and they're screaming about the towel heads, it's like, you know what? I don't have to put up with this. 
I'm going to go back up to my year, and I don't have any gas in my car at the moment. I can't go anywhere. The the um, Ruben Gonzalez, thank you for the donation. Uh, Justin, thank you for the donation. You guys both 